Okay friends, now we are going to talk about another very important secondary structure of a protein which is called the beta structure, beta strand formation. Now unlike the alpha helices, these beta strands are really really simple because the beta strands are not making any kind of headaches so we do not have to bother about the positioning of amino acids to make the bonds, uh, to make the helix pitch or helix rise and all these things. But in this case w what we need to know is the placement of amino acids are in a planar arrangement. So what happens, well, we are looking at in this case uh, to make the beta sheet as the name suggests is they are sheets that means they are placed in sheet like arrangement so one after another layers are being, uh, are being created and we have interaction between uh, the layers, uh, the amino acids of the layers to make bonds with each other. So as we can see in this picture this is an amino acid chain, this is another amino acid uh, peptide chain, this is another peptide chain uh, uh, that means the interaction between this peptide chain, uh, the uh, interaction between uh, this peptide chain lead to the generation of this secondary structure uh, which are called the beta strands or beta sheets uh, indeed. Now uh, how this uh, kind of, uh, why they are called a secondary structure again because we have a, a primary structure of the amino acid sequence and we take the sequence and those amino acids are interacting with each other via hydrogen bonding again in this case uh, to make a structure which is which is much more uh, compact structure than the primary structure that's why uh, they are called a secondary structure. Now in this case uh, again as we know they are uh, making bonds between themselves via hydrogen linkage. Now if we look uh, from here on so this N C alpha C N uh, so here is the C alpha C uh, N C uh, uh, so here we start from suppose this is the N and this is uh, so this is one amino acid this is another this is another so these are the amino acids as we are looking at and <coughs> this is the amino acid for for, for the second uh, line or the for, for the second layer and the amino acid from the first layer will an interact with this amino acid from the second layer now this interaction in, uh, in this case as we are looking at is straightforward interaction because they are placing themselves in in the straight alignment in such a way that this oxygen of the co group will find the hydrogen of the nh group pretty easily and they, that they thus they can make hydrogen bonds with each other and they will make hydrogen bond with each other by uh, by just face to face interactions so this kind of interactions are really really favorable as we are looking at this picture we are talking about the anti parallel uh, orientation of this uh, of this amino acid sequences as we start from here nc alpha uh, nc uh, nc alpha c so we start from here nc alpha c nc alpha c like this we can go on from N to C in this direction and in the second uh, strand as we are looking at we start from here so N C, al uh, N C alpha C so we are going from the left to right so the right to left and left to right that means this is the anti parallel orientation of the polypeptide chains which are placed together and by placing this uh, uh, and uh, ori uh, placing this uh, uh, polypeptide chains in anti parallel orientation we are placing this amino acid sequences we are placing the hydrogen and oxygen uh, of close to each other which will make the hydrogen bond with each other and this hydrogen bond making is really really simple and easy in this case so this anti parallel nature of this alpha helix uh, of this beta strands are pretty common in nature we can find this kind of anti parallel orientation in many of the globular proteins because uh, this anti parallel orientation are favored over parallel orientation in this case now if we move on to the next layer which is called the parallel orientation of this beta strands then what we can find in this case uh, in this case as we see uh, the orientation for uh, the layer of amino acid or peptide bond peptide chains in the first case we are seeing it from the li right to left and the second case is also from right to left that's why there it is called a parallel orientation but this uh, but, but the result of this kind of orientation the placement of oxygen and hydrogen is slightly uh, just just move away from each other and that's why uh, they though they can make hydrogen bonds with each other but still the bond they are making are less stable because of this moving activity of these groups from each other and as a result we have a slightly weakening weakened hydrogen bond uh, in case of this parallel structure of beta sheet that's why in most of the cases if you have a, if you give a, a prefer preference to make a, if a protein ha have a choice to make a mm, the secondary structures most often they choose the anti parallel orientation over the parallel orientation because this is structurally mo much more favored now in this case 
uh, we, we are looking at uh, the alpha helical structure this is the alpha helical structure we are not talking about here we are talking about the beta strand now if we look at the beta strand structure in this case we are talking about different planes so not only it will make a beta strand structure in a single plane so the importance of uh, of providing you this picture is to is to make you sure that they are not when you are talking about the beta strand that doesn't mean they have to make a strand in the same plane it can also make strands in different planes in fact most of the time this is the actual uh, orientation how the beta strands in is being made because beta strand cannot be made flattened weight because the amino acid sequences which are joined together via peptide bonds are place them in such a way due to the rotation around the phi and sau psi angles or the torsional angles they they will change their planes so they are not in the same plane most of the time so they place them in such a way that's why you can find uh, different types of arrangement sometimes it will up sometimes it will down then up and down so this arrangement that's why we do not have this amino all these amino acids in the same plane <coughs> some <coughs> sorry some of the amino acids uh, are placed in particular plane and the other one placed in the opposite plane and the other orientation so to make this kind of interaction really favorable as you can see this is the hydrogens uh, denoted with white the oxygen denoted with uh, with red oxygen is providing slightly electronegative uh, del negative and hydrogen is providing del positive that's why the hydrogen bonding is possible now very important assumption is all in all these cases is that uh, the water molecule in this case the water the presence of water molecule is not tolerable in all this kind of orientation why because if water molecule present in all these cases they will uh, weaken uh, this hydrogen bond formation between this NH and CO group because if water molecule present as we know uh, it, it will drag this uh, CO group to make a bond with that and, and uh, the hydroxyl of the water will pair with hy uh, this hydrogen to make a bond so they will separate the strands apart so any time if water molecule present in large amount in between the structures of these layers of amino acids which are um, tend to make uh, which are uh, making this hydrogen uh, beta sheets uh, if water molecule present uh, in between them then it will disrupt the structure for beta sheet it will disrupt the structure it will make it less stable in those situations so this is a very important assumption you must know uh, now uh, so this is a space filling model of beta pleated sheet as you can see so it's not at all resembling our previous schematic presentation but still this is uh, the actual structure of space filling model through which we can see uh, uh, this is a, uh, this is the protein of jag bean uh, which is called concanavalin a which has been widely studied protein and this is the extra crystallographic structure of that protein as you can see the beta strands are approximately horizontal uh, and this in this lower diagram we can find it much more the beta strands are approximately approximately horizontal with their backbone atom colored in according to their position as we can see in this picture C for green in for blue and O for red and H for white as you can see and they are placed in the orientation in such a way that you can see in this case in all these cases is R groups are facing the outward portion that's why I, I want to focus on this picture the R groups because all this uh, pink color uh, group are the R group of this molecule and as you can see these R groups are facing the outside region and the outer limit and all the groups which are making the bonds the CO and NH are facing the inward this O and you can see the position this O these are the O's red ones and the white ones are the H so they are in close proximity to, to make this kind of bonds now why they are making such a compact structure uh, placing this R groups in the outer space because in this case if the R group or whether it can be hydrophobic in nature or charged or that means a polar in nature it is fine to interact with water if they are polar it is not fine to interact with water if they are hydrophobic but water may not enter in inside the hydrogen inside the region of this protein structure where they are uh, they are providing the CO and NH which are destined to make this hydrogen bonds if water enters then the bond will be disrupted and the structure will be destabilized now in this picture this is uh, this is a model of cha the chain folding model as you can see here this is a uh, um, this is a ribbon drawing uh, which is uh, showing the alpha helices as well as beta sheets and the interaction between alpha helices and beta sheets in this picture as we are looking at so these are the alpha helices in in, in uh, 
cyan and we are having this orange color turns so these are not having any kind of structure we'll discuss them later and we have the here the beta sheets which are denoted with this green color ribbon like structure now we can see here this is a particular arrangement you can also see the different types of arrangement in different types of proteins as we are looking at in this case so this is a structure of in this previous this is a structure of bovine serum albumin uh, so no, sorry, bovine carboxypeptidase, uh, which is in this case is written the eight standard mixed beta sheet and alpha helical structure. So the actual goal of mine to show you this kind of structure is that that not only alpha helix is dominant sometimes, so sometimes a uh, beta sheet is dominant, but still uh, we cannot have a protein which is totally made up with alpha helical beta sheet all the time. This is we can have but this is rare but most of the time when you think about a structure or three dimensional structure of a protein it may consist of all this uh, uh, secondary structures that means the secondary structure for alpha helices secondary structures like beta sheets as well as the secondary structure of beta beta turns or you can uh, not beta turns they are called the simply turns or loops or or turn loop structure something like that okay so we can have them so these are the linkers which are actually helping to link the structures together the one thing I must say in all, all, uh, t telling you the structure of beta strands is the presence of these loops that's why sometimes we call them the, the linker linker regions of a polypeptide chain because without the linker regions of polypeptide chain we cannot link uh, the the beta sheets with each other because as, uh, as I have told before that we have a beta sheet uh, in from left to right which is N to C and another one from C to N orientation so the opposite orientation we need to have a linker we need to have a linker because in throughout of the time from the starting point of the amino acid towards the ending point of the amino acid for making a protein cannot be made up with one single beta strands now this you just print in your mind that this is not possible so whether we are making a protein for making it much more flexible for making it uh, present in different orientations uh, for making it flexible for proper protein folding it must provide different small domain of structure this domains of structure will fold first then those those domains will come together to make a proper folded protein though the mystery of protein folding is still unknown but this is the way this is the way it can be possible okay so this is not a made up with one only one type of secondary structure it is made up with several structure or even if it is made up with only one secondary structure but it is break in such several ways so even it is made up with only beta strands it, it have to be broken in many ways and those beta strands are linked with linker so they, they will link with each other to make a bond it will give them both of the thing give them this flexibility give them the stability or give them the freedom to fold uh, properly in different situations and to unfold in different situations so that's uh, that's all about the secondary structures and beta sheets I, and I hope that will help you thank you